Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm going to bring you along on another What We Eat in a Day video. At the time of this filming, it is early September. We are starting back to school. So we're keeping things simple and doable as we're a little bit busier and then sticking to more of a structured schedule these days. I'm gonna show you what we're eating for lunch. I'm showing you what my kids packed to take along for their school lunch and then also what we're packing for the next day's school lunch. For breakfast this morning, we are doing what we've been doing lately for these school mornings and that is sourdough crepes and then either sausage or bacon along the side. To make the crepes, I use a little bit of sourdough starter, just discard from feeding my sourdough starter. And to the sourdough starter, I will add lots of eggs, usually six to nine. I like these because these are a way to get lots of eggs into your breakfast in like a different way, because it's fun to have variety. You get tired of eating eggs the same way over and over. So I like to do this and then for anybody who is on the GAPS diet or is avoiding sourdough for any reason, you can also make the same recipe with the same amount of winter squash in the place of sourdough starter. So a bunch of eggs to winter squash and then mix it up and cook it the same way. So I have melted butter in my cast iron skillet. Just heat that up, melt the butter, and then pour a little bit in there so it's a nice thin layer, let that cook on one side, flip it, let it finish cooking. And then to serve these, I put kefir inside, roll them up, and then drizzle a little bit of raw local honey on the top. And then like I said, we serve that with sausage or bacon alongside. So for lunch, we're having dinner leftovers, which is what we pretty much always do for the most part. And for today, we're having pizza that we made the night before. I have two different versions. I have a sourdough pizza crust version and then a cauliflower pizza crust version. Both of these recipes are on my channel. Depending on the order of filming, the cauliflower one may or may not be up quite yet, but if it's not, it's coming very soon. And then alongside, we're having some fermented ginger carrots. And a quick little note, whenever I am very busy, I love this brand for fermented foods. It's my favorite brand of uh, fermented vegetables. It's Oregon Brine Works, and I get them from Azure Standard. I will have them linked in the description box down below if you'd like to check them out. And then the kids who are at school today took kind of similar to what we're having. They have pizza from last night's dinner, and then they also have some tangerines, some sauerkraut, and then we're putting together a school lunch for my daughter for school tomorrow, and that is just some of the stew meat that I pulled out of the stew that we had tonight. And then she has some sauerkraut, a tangerine, and then some sourdough crackers. So I have a recipe for sourdough rye crackers on my channel, and then when I get really busy, something that I like to do is get these jovial uh, organic sourdough einkorn crackers. These are a really nice choice because they're nice sourdough, very simple, clean ingredients, and they're really tasty. So that's something that I like to get for busy times when I don't have time to make them myself. So that's what we're doing today and tomorrow for school lunches. And then when my kids get home from school, if they are saying they're hungry and need a little something first, I always check and make sure that they've eaten all of their lunch. And if not, and if they want something, then I go ahead and have them finish that. And then if they have eaten their lunch and they want a little something right away, then um, sometimes we'll have things like a piece of fruit. Today they're having an apple, and then they're also drinking some raw milk. It is the middle of the day right now, and I'm gonna go ahead and get dinner started right before lunch. And for dinner, we're planning to have some beef stew. And something that I like to do when I can, especially when I have a bunch of fermented liquid, so like pickle brine is what I have this time, is to ferment the meat for a while before cooking. So whenever I remember, whether it's half an hour or a few hours, I like to do what Dr. Natasha recommends and put the meat in there with the fermented liquid, the brine, and let that sit. And then I'll go and add everything else. So I have some beef stew meat in there and the pickle brine that's been sitting for a little while. And then to that, I'm going to be adding some onion, some carrots, 
I'm gonna add a little bit more mineral salt and a sprinkle of pepper and then also a few bay leaves, some more filtered water to cover everything. And then also, I will, once in a while I will do this. Whenever I have a piece of meaty bones that have a ton of connective tissue and collagen in them. So like we had oxtail recently and there's still so much collagen and gelatin and connective tissue that has not broken down on those. And so I'm going to throw them in again as well. That way I just get like a second use out of all of that great collagen and connective tissue, which will make um, some more meat stock again. And it's just a really great way to use those up. So again, I only do that whenever I have something with a huge chunk of cartilage on it that has not fully dissolved the first time, then I will throw it in one more time. So that's what I'm doing here. So this is something that I oftentimes do if I have meat, like stew meat that is, you know, doesn't have any bones. It has a little bit of connective tissue and you do get a meat stock to gel, I've noticed, if you cook just stew meat. But I do like to add a combination of the meatier bones to stew meat so that you still get that good quality meat stock with all the properties from the meaty bones themselves and then plenty of meat to eat because my family, we all eat quite a bit of meat so I need to make sure that whenever I do a soup that there's the properties from the meaty bones but also plenty of meat for us all to eat as well. So add all that to my cast iron Dutch oven and then put that into the oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit and that will cook all day and then at dinner time it will be ready to serve. So I will show you that then. This can also be done in a pot on the stove. You would just bring everything to a boil and then reduce it to a simmer or you could also do it in a crock pot. You would just need to give it some extra time since the crock pot takes so much longer to heat up than the stove or the oven does. When it's time to eat dinner, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out of the oven, our beef stew, and it's ready to serve and enjoy. And then those of us who are having sourdough are gonna have it alongside some sourdough rye bread. This is something I'll either make myself when I have the time or there's a really great company called Organic Bread of Heaven where you can buy really high quality, long fermented, sprouted sourdough products with really clean organic ingredients. I like to do that when I'm busy and it's a really great alternative to homemade sourdough sprouted bread. And then for the fermented food that we have alongside it, we're gonna have some sauerkraut. And I'll just wait for the bowls of stew to cool a bit and then put sauerkraut alongside in the bowl. And then of course, when we have our sourdough bread, those of us who are eating that, we have it with plenty of grass-fed butter. Nice thick layer of grass-fed butter on there. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed coming along and seeing what we eat in a day. If you have any questions about anything or if you have more video ideas for me, please leave me a comment down below. I always love hearing from you guys. Be sure and check out that description box for links to free eBooks and other goodies. I have a 30 day meal plan for the GAPS diet. I have information on, on how I can help you follow the GAPS diet. And I also have a brand new membership that I'm just opening up where you can get live Q and A's with me, a group Zoom calls, exclusive discounts and all kinds of other goodies. So be sure and check out the description box for all of that. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else you think would enjoy it or find it interesting or helpful. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.